By the end of this video, you will know how to create confetti with an After Effects. This effect is completely customizable. You will be able to change the shapes, movements, and colors to suit whatever project you are working on. And you do not need any plugins to do it. Let's jump right in. All right, this is what we are creating today. And honestly, there is a lot of moving parts here. So I'm going to break it down into sections. First thing that we are gonna do, you can see we have many different shapes. I want you to create these yourself. So I'm just gonna jump over here. For example, I have a square, a circle, and three different strings. So I've drawn one, two, three. Um, so if you do not know, you can come up to the shape tool and just drag out a shape. Maybe hold down shift and have a solid square. Maybe have a fill in it. Um, you could do the same with the ellipse tool, or you might want to draw out a string like so, uh, very simple, okay? Um, you would want to turn the fill off, but you might have something that looks like this. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. The next thing that we want to do, I'm just gonna jump over to our next composition, is add uh, rotation. So if I press play here, you can see that my circle here has uh, rotation on it, or if I turn on my square, you can see that my square has something similar going on. Um, so if I just press U here, it will just bring up these rotation properties that I have set up. So you can see on the X and the Y and the Z, it starts at zero and then a little while later, it goes to one. So I'm just gonna um, go ahead and show you how you would do this. Now, the first most important thing that you have to do is make sure that this little box is selected here and this is gonna make this a 3D object. Okay, so you can come into the transform properties and um, on the keyframe here, just click this little stopwatch on and you can see we've got a keyframe here and I'm just gonna jump forward to one and change this to one. And that's just gonna add one single rotation on it. Do this on all of them. So if I press play now, you can see it rotates and stops. Um, so we are going to add a little expression, very quick, hold down Alt on the stopwatch, and in this box, we are gonna type in loop out. It is case sensitive, and you can just select off and do the same on these ones. So now when I press play, that movement carries on for the entire composition. Now, if that is too fast for you, you could uh, drag them all out so it is much slower. And you could randomize this so that our movement is a bit different. I'm gonna be really honest with you. I did not, when I was creating this composition, I did not consider wind or anything like that. You might wanna consider that. You might have it rotating in a different direction. You know? um, so then I just go ahead and select all of these and press F9 uh, to make it easy ease. And then you will have basically what I have set up on every shape. Uh, the only ones that I didn't have all of this rotation, I'll just delete this for now, um, is the string. If I select this and press U, you can see I only had a Y rotation on the string. So after we have rotation, then you might add uh, some effects. So I wanted my circle to um, look like it was kind of flittering through the air. So to do this, I actually added a couple of effects. I've got a wave warp, and I've got a turbulent dis displace. You do not need to color these. This is not where you add color. I just added this uh, to make them all look different. So at this point, you just wanna add some sort of effect. Next, we are finally going to uh, turn these into particles. So if you have never uh, used Particle World, uh, to get up something, uh, to set up something like this, you would just go layer, new solid, and you can name it whatever you want press OK and in the effects and presets you can see I've already typed it particle you can see particle worlds come up so I'm just going to drag this onto my layer and you can see this what has shown up is actually very different from what I had set up so I will before deleting this I will just show you how to set up the particle itself so you're going to go into the particle tab and you're going to go to particle type 
and you're going to choose textured disk. Now, the reason that you're choosing textured disk and not textured square is that textured square does not allow you to change the rotation speed. So textured disk. And I don't know if you spotted it, maybe not, um, but you can see nothing right now. And that is because you need to go to texture and add one of our shapes. So I might add another square. And you can see it's added a bunch of yellow squares. I want you to just uh, change this birth color to uh, somewhere between white and black on this edge. And the reason for that will become apparent in a little while. So that is how to set up your layer. I'm just going to delete this for now and kind of go over actually what I did because when I click on this I'm going to uh, select all of these and put you and you can see these are the keyframes that I've got set up. Let's jump into this particle world layer. What we've got here is some keyframes and to create this bursting effect kind of bursts and kind of stops. Sorry my computer is so slow. <laughs> so it kind of goes from a rate of zero and then jumps up. Uh, let's just turn these off. I'm going to change this to 100. So you can see here, it bursts open and then just stops and it just starts falling down. Okay. So I have done this on every layer uh, for some number. So you can see on this layer, the birth rate is one. Down here, it's 0 0.5 over here it's 2 uh, but the important part is that it goes up to a number that you want and then it disappears again okay so it goes back down to 0 and that's going to make it stop producing uh, like you might see in a party popper and we do also want on every one we want the longevity to be 10 seconds because it's going to fall off the screen uh, the next important thing that uh, was set up I suppose was in this producer and this should be 0 0.025 I was playing around with uh, this radius so I mean I'll change it if I change this to 0 0.5 you can see this goes right across the screen and it changes the look of that party popper kind of effect. So these are the uh, numbers that you do want to change. You could also change the location of it altogether, the position of it altogether. Um, but I went with a radius of 0 0.025. And the other thing that is important is you want it to be a cone axis. Uh, next thing that we are affecting is the velocity. So if I drag this number up, you can see that it goes bigger. And I played around with this a lot. I found that 1.3 for my project was the magic number. But um, like I said, it's so individual. Basically, you want to be adjusting the velocity, the gravity, the resistance, extra and extra angle. These are like the main ones for this project. I actually had the gravity set up to 0.35. Um, for a lot longer and it, I found that it just didn't feel right like I wanted I wanted to be able to see particles kind of floating for a little while and spinning so that is why I set it to 0 0.2 and I also found that adjusting the resistance changes how far out it goes and the same with the angle like the extra angle it kind of just like adjusts how it's falling. I'm terrible at explaining. <laughs> uh, but you know, I find with these things you just got to play around. But like I said, these are your magic numbers right here. Again, please, if you want to break down this project, please download the project down below. It's free. Um, you can find it there. Next thing, I'm going to turn all of these back on again, right? You've set up your perfect particles and you'll notice that all of mine are black and white. So the reason that I have set all of these up to black and white is that we are going to use the colorama effect on here. So what I would suggest you do is on your first particle world, you go into, you can type in effects and presets and just type in colorama 
and you can just drop it on like this all right so um, yeah I'll hide that for now and you can see you'll get something that looks like this Colorama is one of my favorite effects. It can look a little bit intimidating. Uh, so let me see. If you went to ramp gray, you might get a better idea of what's happening. It is um, converting all of the colors in the document and it is putting them on a kind of scale from black to white. And every color on the scale can get assigned another color. So if I go to, um, let's see, the hue cycle that we were just looking at, um, we can see that anything that was uh, black now gets assigned red and so on. Um, so you could actually go to the input phase as well and just change that, which color gets affected by where. Okay, um, but what this does, so I went through and made all of my colors black and white, you know, it's assigning a color to each shade. Uh, I hope I am explaining that correctly. It is 10.45 at night, okay. <laughs> um, so I'm going to delete this and uh, switch back my colorama settings. So you can see here, um, I set up my own colors. I've got everything on the scale and I'm going to go through and switch it on that we've got these different colors starting to appear. So if you wanted your particle to show up differently, you could go in and maybe just change the particle color and our birth color to something completely different like so press control C you can see that changed the color completely another thing that I found to actually change the look quite drastically it's under particle and you can change the volume shade so you can bring this down to zero and it will have no lighting whatsoever or you could bring it up to a hundred on some of my shapes I set it to 50 and some of them I did not so I feel like I've rambled <laughs> A whole heap. Uh, one of the keys to this effect I felt and I've probably not done it enough is that you want it to actually look a little different so um, I ended up kind of uh, in some cases I had a circle and I duplicated it and um, so I think I had a circle and it was a, a birth rate of two and I duplicated it changed each one to one and then went into um, the particle world settings down into extra and I changed the random seed so in this case I'm going to do 20 and it's going to change the location but I'm also going to go into the input phase and just change the color slightly um, so now it's just a little bit more random because we had some repetition there okay so this is what I had after I added color and uh, I thought it was okay uh, but I felt it didn't quite have the movement that I wanted so I went through on all of my particle layers and I just added some turbulent displace on some of them so I'm just going to go through and switch that on different on every layer these settings intentionally different because if you make it the same on every layer it's going to have some like kind of warped overall effect um, yeah, I didn't even add it to the strings. So this is the final effect with the turbulent displace on it. Uh, to be honest, I think I'm not quite happy with it. And I think the key to this effect is really going to be going through, uh, possibly adding a lot more particle layer, particle world layers, and splitting it up, splitting the animation of these uh, little shapes up so that you can have a lot more repetition. And I think that I'm even going to do that um, before this final render is out. So I just wanted to give one final look of my project because I did go in and duplicate uh, more particle layers and I created way more shapes and I just wanted to give a quick look at uh, my shapes themselves so you could see how different the rotation is on each of them just to get rid of some of that repetitiveness and uh, make everything look a little bit more random when it's falling. And this is the final render. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, giving it a like will let me know that I am on the right track. And if you want to watch another After Effects tutorial, make sure to click this video right here because this is the video YouTube thinks that you should watch next. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!